Yo, what up tubers? It's your boy, Scotty Z, coming at you with another EVT video. Today's video, we're gonna be going over the uh, hail pump, pump packings. We're gonna try to adjust them up. Let me show you how these are leaking um, and why they shouldn't be leaking. So, let's go check it out. All right, so here is the pump transmission and pump. As you can see, there's a steady drip coming out of it. Um, not supposed to have that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to adjust these packings up. So, you have up here, what I call, use the bird cage. Uh, that's where you, you adjust your packing at. So, this left side is the pump side, right side is the transmission. So we want to rotate that cage upwards, going that way. So we want to rotate it right going back into the pump. You have a pin that I'll try to get you a good look at here. Right here is your pin. And I don't know if you can see from where it's at, but there's a little ledge. And you rotate that pin around to where the pin that's going into the side is sitting on the ledge. So that's like your locking pin and you need to pull that out before you start adjusting it. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a, um, first off, if you go to any hail pump class, they're going to tell you to adjust this manually uh, with like a pry bar or something, but uh, if you've been in this game long enough, you know you're not going to turn that with a uh, pry bar so um as you can kind of see in that right corner it looks like this has been adjusted already so we may not be able to adjust them anymore i'm going to try to get one like probably quarter turn on it and then see if we can get this drip to stop so what we do is i have a long punch and an air hammer and we're gonna try to adjust it that way. Okay, so we got our pin up top. We gotta to put it in the unlocked position. Um, and I got lucky on that one. Sometimes those things are seized up. Uh, best way to free them up is just use like some PB blast or some kind of uh, penetrator oil and some vice grips and you just start working it back and forth until you can free up that spring. This um, air hammer chisel that I'm using measures out to 18 inches, so it'll let you get up in there. doesn't pull down all the way or I can't get any more adjustment on that so my pin is pulled out all the way you can usually look straight up and see the bottom of the pin so it is out all the way I'm gonna try to go to the next cage and keep rotating it Able to my try to try to go a little bit more in here. There it goes. You see how my, my drip slowed down? Let's try to go a little more. Ideally, you want to get it into a spot where that pin's going to sit back down inside the cage. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and release my pin, and hopefully it will fall into a position. You can look up and see. It looks like it's about to set down inside of a cage, so I'm just going to rotate this a little bit more.
this point I can get to the next cage and hit on it. There, I think I heard it click now. Just a little bit more. You can see we still have just a slight drip going on. <clears throat> so the pin's gonna keep it from backing off more. I don't want to over adjust this, so what you do is um, you run the pump, and uh, I believe NFPA used to be it used to be like eight to ten drops a minute, I believe. Let me look that up real quick. Okay, per hail it is. 30 drops per minute at 150 PSI. So what you would do is you would run your pump up to 150 PSI and then watch how many drips is dripping out per minute. And that's what is acceptable. All right, so I got the truck started. Uh, we're gonna let it build up some fuel pressure, uh, let it run here for a little while. Uh, in the meantime, I have a check engine light. It keeps coming back on. Uh, I think it's a turbo actuator code. So let me go grab the insight and we'll see what's going on with it. Alright, we got an insight hooked up here. Um, and sure enough, I got uh, turbocharger actuator software at normal update rate. I already went ahead and did a recalibration. Sometimes you can recalibrate it and it'll be fine. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and order a turbo, uh, turbo actuator for it. Um, what, did I, what I ended up doing was... Uh, I found that the wires going to the actuator were chafed and rubbing, uh, so I ended up putting a new pigtail on. However, the parts supply, they gave me one that connected up, but it was aluminum wiring. Um, so I was like, you know, let's just go ahead and solder it in and as an experiment, see if it causes any issues. If anyone out there knows of any issues with soldering aluminum to copper, causing uh, software abnormal update rate issues or what have you, uh, leave a comment and let me know. Because uh, this is just a learning experience for me. Um, I would have preferred copper to copper, but uh, I said let's have an experiment and see, uh, see what happens here. So. As you guys have seen in uh, one of my previous shorts, um, I've been having fuel issues with this truck. So I'm looking at uh, my data logger and uh, trying to figure out if some of these numbers are correct or not. Fuel rail pressure command. I'm getting pretty close to what's measured. So I was also looking at the fuel pump actuator command current and the duty cycle. I'm gonna go compare this to another truck. But if anyone out there knows, leave it in comments, let me know. Um, I've replaced the lift pump. Um, all the lines going to the lift pump. Uh, fuel, water separator housing, and fuel filter housing. Um, I've also replaced the check valve that's inside of the ECM plate. So at this point, I'm not sure what else to do. I was gonna replace one more line and I was gonna replace the supply line from the tank to the filter. But yeah, anybody out there knows what's going on, uh, help me out here. All right, so we've had this truck running for a minute now. We're gonna put it in pump mode and see how many drips we get at 150 PSI. All right, we're gonna uh, take the pump that's open. We're gonna put it in pump mode. Pump engaged, put it in drive. Okay, the pump light will come on. We're gonna run it 
up to 150 psi. Second adjustment. Um, as you can see, nothing's coming out at idle, and we are in pump mode. Let's idle it up and see what we got. So as you guys can see, um, we're not getting enough drips. It starts off with about eight, and then just like almost stops. Um, so it's a little too slow. You gotta have those drips. It keeps your shaft lubricated, keeps it cool. So on that second adjustment, I think I ended up going to two cage spots, um, the notch spots. So I'm gonna try to go back one, but my fear is that since I've already gone too much, it's gonna to be too loose when I back it off one. So, we'll find out. Okay, I found this online. Still with the Q series pump, which is what we're using. We're using the Q Max. As you can see there, pump packing and gland adjustment for a leakage rate of eight to 10 drops per minute at 150 PSI. The slight leak lubricates and cools the shaft and packing to prevent burning and scoring. And you can pause this and read this if you want. Pump packing should be replaced every three years. So chances are I'm just gonna have to replace these pump packings because um, it's been well over that. Connect to a water source of 150 PSI. If not possible, operate the pump at 150 PSI from draft or from the booster tank discharging through the booster line, another small nozzle, or circulate back to the tank, which is what I'm doing. I'm circulating it back to the tank. Count the drops, water leak per minute. Okay guys, um, so this is an older manual. I think it was said it was from 2006. I think 8 to 10 drops is acceptable. But I know NFPA did change their, um, even their answer on the EBT test to like 30 drops per minute. So that's where I was initially getting it from. Um, and then I found this older manual. So either way, either way, I think you'd be good. I would be fine if I could get 8 to 10 drops per minute. I'd be satisfied with that. I'd be okay with that. Um, and technically I get that right off the bat, but then it seems to stop dripping completely. So I'm gonna let these packings sit here for a second. I'm gonna fire back up and see if we can get a consistent eight to 10 drops per minute. If not, then I'm gonna try to back it off one more gland, see what we get.
Okay, so I adjusted the pump packing's back one gland, and it's uh, basically the first time I adjusted it. I showed you that drip rate. Um, with that adjustment, I'm not getting any drips with the pump off, but I am getting excessive drips with it running at 150 PSI. I'd rather keep it at that for now than have that second adjustment where I was barely getting seven drops per minute. Um, I'd rather it be over cooled than under cooled. And at this moment, I'll just go ahead and order uh, pump packings to replace it. So there you go. Um, hopefully you learned something from this video. If you like what you see, comment, subscribe, share. Remember, I'll just follow the wolf. Lead the pack. Later.